Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special Friendsgiving edition of Academia Live. Uh, David and Joe here in the Academia Test Kitchen with a very uh, special treat for you tonight. This is our award-winning smoked turkey and sausage gumbo. Now, I know people throw terms like, like award-winning around uh, pretty freely. Maybe, maybe they can back up the claim or maybe they can't. Um, show, show them the goods, Joe. Show them what we got. Oh. <coughs> literally, it's literally award-winning. This is the trophy. 2015 uh, Fay Dodo Gumbo Competition. The local gumbo competition, Austin. Your champions are right here at the test kitchen. Uh, myself, my husband, and our neighbor, Tad, yep. took home the, the championship trophy. And tonight, we're going to lay out all the secrets. Neither of us are uh, even remotely Cajun, um, but we make good gumbo, so you can take that with a grain of, uh, of, of highly seasoned salt. Um, our tricks, <laughs> smoked turkey. Um, we do a smoked turkey and andouille. A lot of times you'll see chicken sausage gumbo. We use smoked turkey. Um, this is a laborious process. We've been working on this for days. Today is Tuesday. Uh, we started Friday night. Uh, brining the turkey. The turkey was was in the brine of uh, salt, molasses, and water over two nights until Sunday morning. It was rubbed down with oil and kind of chilled for about half the day, and then it went into uh, the smoker for about six hours. So a lot of steps there, but you, there's other uh, faster ways to do a smoked turkey. And the other part of that is all of the bones and skin and things from that get turned into a smoked turkey stock, which is the liquid that's used in the uh, gumbo. Yeah, crucial facts there. Yeah. The, the key distinguishing features of the gumbo, smoked turkey, uh, and, and even probably even more importantly, I would say, is the smoked turkey, the smoked turkey stock. Yeah. Um, because of our style of cooking, we don't really use recipes when we are <laughs> making something that we're familiar with. But in the in the, the link there on the YouTube video, there is uh, our best guess at a recipe. But I always tell folks, if this is something that doesn't require a lot of precision, like a soup or a stew, you know, ish is a really good uh, measurement. So what goes in uh, the gumbo? The steps, the first thing we're going to do is make a roux and we make a really dark, what they call like a chocolate roux. So we're gonna make that roux. And then uh, Joe has done all this prep here, dice the veggies. So the trinity is the celery, the onion, and the green bell pepper. Um, okra yeah! is, is, is one of the kind of optional ingredients. There's a whole bunch of different ways to interpret gumbo. Um, <clears throat> because it's, it's fall, and okra is usually a summer uh, produce when, because we like to cook uh, the gumbo at Thanksgiving. We will buy the okra when it's in season, which is usually ends about a month earlier, cut it up, freeze it, hold it. Um, andouille sausage, little crushed tomatoes uh, and, and garlic. Now one uh, trick that we've learned over the years is to build, try to build flavor all along the way. So we don't ever throw um, uh, these ingredients just kind of like raw into the pot. So like the, the sausage will crisp it up real nice. You'll see that. Uh, probably in a, in a time lapse, Thank, thankfully for all of us. Uh, we crisp up the, the uh, okra so it's got a little bit of texture and isn't, isn't, uh, isn't gooey. Mm, gooey. Uh, what else do we do? Well, the roux, the, our roux method is a little bit uh, unique. Uh, yes. um, most people will heat oil or a fat um, and then put the flour, toast the flour on that and build that and heat it that way. Our methodology, we learned from our friend Todd Duplichain, who's a chef here in town, he toasts the flour first. Yep. It's, it's a, it can be a little tricky uh, in terms of like, you don't want to burn it. You know, it's, it's just like when you're cooking it the other way, but it's a, it's a little bit faster process because you're putting all the heat on that toasting of the flour and you're, and you're getting that kind of flour flavor kind of gone and then you add the fats afterwards and it's, it's really- I, I think it probably cuts the time in half to make the quantity and darkness of the gumbo uh, that we make. And speaking of quantity, we're making a big batch. This is uh, something that we always kind of deliberately over prepare because it does take a lot of time. We usually only make gumbo once or twice a year. Uh, and then we freeze tons of it because in uh, zipper bags or quart containers in the freezer, it'll last uh, for a long time and it makes a great uh, sort of uh, quick meal uh, when you're ready for it. So I think without further ado, let's get cooking, huh? Okay. Let's do it. Here we go, kids. Well, one of the most important decisions uh, when deciding around what to have for dinner is actually to uh, decide what you're going to drink for dinner, or sorry, <laughs> what you're going to drink while you're cooking dinner. And um, tonight we're going to make the vieux carré, but we're giving it a little twist. So since we're making gumbo, 
which is a, a southern Louisiana, you know, Creole or a Cajun dish. We're going to use Grand Patron Bordeaux as uh, the main ingredient, featured ingredient. We're feeling so fancy here tonight, uh, but any of our aged uh, expressions uh, would work. But Grand Patron Bordeaux is finished in uh, Bordeaux casks. So that's going to be a delicious cocktail, I feel like. A little Doucet uh, Cognac, uh, sweet vermouth. The Bucare, Bucare means uh, the old square, right? So this is the uh, old part of, the, of the, the city of New Orleans, the French Quarter, where sits the Monteleone um, Hotel, uh, where uh, the famous carousel bar uh, is in the lobby. And that's uh, where this, this cocktail was invented many, many moons ago. And then Benedictine, also part of our grand familia of Bacardi uh, brands, uh, French herbal liqueur. And so uh, a couple different bitters, the New Orleans uh, classic uh, Peixot bitters and Angostura um, aromatic bitters. So our little tequila riff on the Vieux Carré. Get some ice chunks here. Can't wait to enjoy this cocktail while we cook our gumbo. Um, we might be here for a while. <laughs> All right, so I've got some uh, big ice cubes from my friend Javier over at Fat Ice. I'm just gonna pour a little of this cocktail in here, save the rest for a topper offer. Well, I'm sure that wash line looks right. Um, lemon uh, twist is the garnish. So usually this cocktail has uh, rye whiskey in it, uh, uh, rye whiskey and, and cognac. I'm using uh, <clears throat> Grand Patron Bordeaux and um, rye whiskey cocktails often get this lemon twist garnish. We're using Meyer lemon. Uh, it's the beginning of Meyer lemon season here at our house. These were the very first Meyer lemons pulled off the tree for this year and then treating ourselves so deluxely uh, to a cherry garnish as well. Hey Joe, what are you doing? You want to have a, a cocktail with me? How, how about this <laughs> View Carré um, Cheers. variation? Cheers. Let's get cooking. All right, so I've got a couple cups of flour here in the uh, uh, cast iron, and we're just gonna toast this um, uh, pretty substantially toast it pretty dark in the pan and <clears throat> once it starts to get to like a pretty dark i don't know hazelnut or something color uh, we'll start adding the oil cook it down and uh meanwhile joe is going to crisp up the sausage the okra and a couple other things uh we'll see you back here in a few minutes as we uh, as we get some progress here All right, you'll notice that the flour is taking on a really dark color and you really just gotta keep it moving. Um, <clears throat> now that it's in this kind of like light sort of cocoa-y flavor, or I don't know, camel, whatever you wanna call it, I'm going to start adding uh, the oil and we'll begin the process of making our roux. All right, so it's our roux is starting to look real nice. Uh, chocolatey. I'd add a little bit more flour. <clears throat> this is two and a half cups of flour, one cup of oil, and a stick of butter. So that's our ring. Um, we crisp up the sausage, then the okra, and now we're going to start building the soup. So right now Joe is sweating the uh, the veggies. We've got the the trinity, which is the onions, the bell peppers, and the garlic. Uh, not yet. Uh, sorry. The onion, the bell pepper, and the celery. Um, and then we'll just slowly add uh, the rest of the veg and sweat all that. <clears throat> and then we'll toss in the uh, roux and the stock, uh, bring it to a boil, and then drop it down to a simmer. And then we'll cook that for a while till the flavors all incorporate, we'll season it. And uh, once the soup is uh, getting close to finish is when we'll add in the uh, turkey because it's already cooked and the sausage. All right, so the veggies are all sweating in the pot, and then I uh, dumped the <clears throat> roux in here, and we'll coat it all and let the um, let the veggies sweat in the roux for a few minutes before we start stirring in the stock. So we've done two rounds of simmering, or uh, of adjusting the flavor, 
And now we're gonna go ahead and dump the okra, the sausage, and the turkey in there. Let it simmer about 30 minutes, taste it again. Those ingredients will impart a lot of flavor to the soup. Uh, we'll do one more round of, of seasoning adjustment, an adjustment, and then we'll probably be good to go. We did two cuts on the turkey. So there's most of it's kind of like a cube, like a, I don't know, half to three quarter inch dice. And then some pieces are like a kind of pull, which will give it like two different types of texture. We'll fold all of that in. Maybe bring the temperature up just a little bit. This consistency looks really good. It smells incredible in here. And uh, we'll be back and uh, taste this in about 30 minutes. Well, it wasn't easy, but we did it. We got here. We're at the finish line. Um, the award-winning gumbo. Uh, neighbor Tad, Captain Tad, who smoked the turkey for us, has already fallen asleep, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but we've been working on this for, what, four or five days now. The gumbo is ready. A um, couple of classic uh, uh, on here. We've got some scallions, a little bit of uh, uh, flat leaf parsley we got from a local uh, farm here called uh, Two Fingers. And then some people put the uh, some people put the uh, filet in the in the gumbo to thicken it. Um, I like to just use it as kind of an aromatic garnish. Really and, then, and then uh, crystal hot sauce Ooh. is the only hot sauce. Uh, although I, I'm not, I'm gonna taste it, it taste that. it without uh, that first. Let's see how we did here. Let's see if this is. Uh, we're also eating the gumbo out of the trophy. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> really good. You know what's gonna be the best part about this? What's up? It's tomorrow morning. Oh yeah, the, the signature breakfast here at our house. Gumbo and eggs. Fried egg on top of gumbo bowl gumbo. Yeah, <clears throat> it's it's really good. Well, that's it. It was um a pleasure cooking for you this evening, uh, making drinks for you. Yep. Uh, recipe is, is in the, uh, the comments there, and I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time on Academy of Life. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Be safe with everybody. See you next, next time. Cheers.